Hey, what's up guys? My name is Kyle Warner. Today we're going to talk to you about cornering. Cornering is the most important skill in mountain biking and understanding which technique to use, where to use it, and why is kind of what we're going to go over today. This is part one of a two-part series. Part one, we're gonna cover the foundation of cornering, flat turns and switchbacks. Today, we set up a little course that April's gonna run through. We're gonna see what she can improve in her cornering technique, run her through some of my favorite drills, and see if we can get her going a little bit faster and a little bit more confident through these flat turns. All right, so we got April out here, and today we're gonna to help you work on your cornering technique. The way that we're gonna go about this today is we set up a course with four really flat, loose switchbacks. And that's a type of corner that is really hard to navigate without the proper technique. We're gonna have you do it with no coaching first, see how she does. I'll point out a few little things here and there, and I'm gonna show her all my favorite drills, hopefully help you get like the bike body separation, learn about how to get counterweight into your tire knobs, all that good stuff. And by the end of the day, I'm hoping that she'll understand the reason why she's getting in that position versus just telling you guys what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said, April's gonna run through this course two times, kind of point out a few little things and then uh, go from there. All right, I'm excited to learn. All right, let's do this. As you guys can see, the dirt is super loose. So just powdery, dusty dirt. How are you feeling about your chances today? Definitely think I will get better after you coach me. <laughs> are you ready for your first attempt? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Run two. How did you feel uh, after those two runs? I don't really know what I could do better, but I know that I can go faster mm -hmm. and I want to, but I'm scared that I will like blow the turn. Yeah, I saw basically three things that we're gonna try to help you with. One was entry into the corner, where to be on the corner, like your line choice and also your braking. Um, the other thing I saw was just body position and bike body separation. So leaning the bike to get it to corner tighter without you feeling like you're gonna wash out. And then the third one is kind of like just carrying that speed out of the turn. So I think we can work on all that with these little drills I have uh, in mind. So let's go ahead and go over and start practicing some drills. All right. We came out here to this kind of open concrete court, even though it's kind of silly because you're not on a trail, every pro rider or every good rider has spent a lot of time on a basketball court or concrete surface, just practicing the fundamentals. I like to set up some cones to do some of these drills that I'm gonna show you. You can also use like soda cans or something like that if you don't have access to cones. The whole idea is to just set goals for yourself and little markers so you know where to initiate your turn, where to look, and it's just nice to have a visual point. We're gonna run through a few different drills, but first I wanted to address a question that we've been seeing a lot, which is like bike setup for cornering. And a lot of people are asking about tire pressure and how that plays into cornering. Getting the correct tire pressure is very important, but ultimately technique matters more than anything. That's why we're focusing more on technique than bike setup on this video, but we will do bike setup video in the future. I will put a link in the description to a tire pressure calculator that works really well. That way you guys kind of figure that out. But personally, I run about 25 PSI front and rear. April's right around like 23 PSI front and rear, but we have different size wheels and tires and everything. So it's all relative. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and start this very first drill, which is bike body separation. Kind of walk you guys through that and then have April run through it. So this first drill that we're gonna do is a very simple one, but it's actually the most important in understanding cornering. Basically, I'm just gonna have April ride in a straight line. She's gonna ride with one foot down and practice leaning the bike away from the center line of her body. So this is called bike body separation. So she'll be riding, lean it down, stand it up, lean it down, stand it up, and then do it on the opposite foot. The reason we need to practice that is because when you're hitting a flatter corner or something with low traction and low G-force, you wanna stay centered over your bike. And the way to do that is to put one foot down. That puts your center line of, of your mass over the tire knobs that are on the ground. Versus if you have your feet level like this and you go around a corner, a lot of times you'll lean. Now, if you look, my head is over to the side my upper torso is over to the side and I have so much less weight and grip on my tire knobs. What we're gonna practice today is meant for low G-force and flat turns like what we did on that earlier course where it's flat, soft turns, you need maximum grip, have one foot down, 
practice leaning the bike into the corner and having your mask stay over the tire knobs that are touching the ground. This is just the first drill that we're gonna practice, getting the bike to separate from the body, keep it simple, and uh, we'll see how April does on this one. Here's a quick example of why the simple bike body separation drill is important. As I go around this slow flat turn, my bike and tire have nothing to lean against for support. This means that my only contact with the ground is the inside edge of my tire. To reduce the risk of losing traction in the turn, I need to drop my outside foot and put as much weight as I can on the outside of the bike to keep weight over the contact point of the tire. This is why separating from the bike is very important. For comparison, in this clip you can see me going through a high g-force bermed corner. You'll notice that my tire has much more surface area contacting the ground and therefore much more grip. As long as the support of this berm continues, I will have the most grip by keeping my feet level and transferring equal weight through the center of my bike and into the contact point with the ground. This is why I like to use the feet level approach on high g-force well-supported turns and on low g-force flat or slightly banked turns, I will use outside foot down technique we are covering today. The first thing she's gonna do is just ride down that straight line and then basically try to get bike body separation, push down on your inside handlebar. So if your right foot is down, push down on the left side handlebar. And we'll just kind of have her do a few runs like that and uh, see how it goes. All right. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> so that foot down and that hand pushing. Yeah. What did you do last time? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. One more. There you go. It's harder than it looks, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't feel very like coordinated right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's harder than it looks. Um, you know, you'd think going in a straight line and just getting your bike to lean would be a lot easier, but mentally it's hard to kind of relate, you know, outside foot down, push your inside hand. It's kind of like patting your belly and rubbing your head type that's thing. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like to just simplify it and not focus on a corner yet. Practice a lot of those, um, you know, just ride in a straight line, just get the bike to lean. Because when you get into a corner, you just have to do that second nature. And so second nature of muscle memory, outside foot down, inside hand push, and you'll be good. But now we're gonna kind of incorporate that first drill and add on to it in the second drill. What we're gonna do here is we have some cones set up. We have the entrance, the apex, and the exit. So what April's gonna do is basically come in pedaling. She's gonna look ahead, spot her apex, and the apex is the center of a corner or kind of the point in the corner where you start to go the opposite direction. When she gets to the apex, she's gonna look out and spot the exit, and that'll get your bike to whip around, and that's kind of how you corner. What I see a lot of people do is they'll stay fixated on the apex, and so as they go into the apex, they look at it, and even as they go through, they'll kind of look back, and that kind of messes up your weight balance. So what we wanna practice is get to the center of the corner, snap your head around, look at the exit, and then you'll just rip it. Sweet. All right, ready when you are? That was really good. Thanks. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> All right, let's do a couple more. Okay. okay, that's really good. Try to lean in the bike a little bit more. Okay, yeah. Bike, just try to lean it over a bit. I wasn't more. thinking about that enough. It's hard. It's a lot of things to think about. You're doing good. Okay. Um, how early is too early to drop my foot? Okay, so she just had a really good question, and she was asking me, how early is too early to drop your foot before a turn? My answer to that is, as soon as you're done braking, so whenever you feel like you're at the correct speed to hit the corner, then you can drop your foot. Okay. So on this example, since she's going on a flat surface, she can drop it very early. But if you're like on a steeper section of trail, you want to get all your braking done and then drop your foot kind of at the last second. So that's why that muscle memory needs to be good on the trail. Okay. On the parking lot, you can get away with like slower muscle memory because you have such a long time to get ready for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. Okay, cool. So as soon as you're done braking, after you're out of your braking position, drop your foot corner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> April is doing a great job of looking through the turn, but I want to highlight two little things she can improve on her body position and the reason why she almost washed out on the one attempt. If you look at the entrance into the corner, she's in a good position with her chin near the front end of the bike. As she gets deeper into the corner, she starts to lean in with her head and extend her arms, which shifts her weight slightly back and away from the front tire, causing it to briefly lose traction. In this attempt, she stays more forward on the bike throughout the entire corner and it helps her maintain traction through the turn. 
It's a very subtle change, but that can be the difference between washing out or having grip and a loose turn. I always try to keep my chin over the stem and handlebars when turning. Um, all right, so now that you have kind of the bike body separation down, you got that lean and the look really good, I'm going to set up a little slalom for you, and we're going to see if you can do both sides and all right. <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> I'll do a quick run just to kind of show you the goal. I'm going to come in and then do a right-hand turn, left-hand turn, right-hand turn. How'd that look? You look good. Hopefully I can do as good. I think you'll do good. It just takes a little practice, but if you get stuck on anything, I'll help you. Okay. How'd it feel? <laughs> Not the best. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll let you do a couple more and just figure it out before I give you any pointers. Okay, thanks. <laughs> That was a lot better. Okay. That was way better. So that looks a lot better with your head and everything. Now what I'm seeing is you're leaning your body with the bike. Uh -huh. So just focus really hard on bike body separation. Um, Cause I see you kind of like leaning with your head and it's throwing your weight off. Okay. So stay centered. That way you can move the bike left, right, left, right, left, right. So it'll yeah. make your moves quicker. Okay. Here's a quick example of what I meant by leaning with her bike. On the left, you can see that I have the majority of my weight on the outside of the bike as I'm turning. On the right, you can see that April's doing a good job of keeping her outside foot down to weight the tires, but she isn't taking full advantage of this technique because she is keeping her weight more in line with the center line or steering axis of the bike. If she could bend her outside leg and push her hips away from the center line of the bike, it would help her a lot with quickness and grip. A little bit more bike body separation. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing way better. I think the one thing that I'm seeing is uh, your elbow dropping like that. Okay. So elbow up and that'll, that'll really finish the turn, but you do everything else good. It's just, this needs to come up. Okay. So see how it goes. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was sick. All right. So she's doing way, way, way better. We just took like about a 20 minute break and just didn't film anything, but just did lap after lap after lap. And I was trying to help April with all the little things that were kind of detailing in this video. So there's so many things to think about. And so if you don't get this on the first day or even the second day or even the third day, it's totally fine because like, it'll take a lot of practice. It, it takes a lot of practice. And even with April right now, like she's getting it, but I'm literally like coaching her through every run. And so she's getting like, okay, you did that good, but do one little thing different and it's able to help her really quickly. But I just wanted you guys to know, like this is a big process. We've been out here pretty much all day trying to practice this and that's why she's getting so good at it. But we're gonna do maybe one or two more runs till you get all three good. You're doing awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you're doing really good. Good job. Thanks. Yeah, that was good. Nicely done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what were some of the key things that you took away that helped kind of click? or what were the most important pieces for you? What I learned was separating my body from the bike and like keeping it straight rather than turning with my whole body, dropping my heel again and getting my elbow out for the corner. Yeah, that was the key kind of the elbow, huh? Yeah. And looking through the turn? Yeah. Yeah. I think that after all this practice, we need to go apply it on a trail, see how much faster it helps you be. All right. All right. We were back out at the race course and we just went up to one of the corners that gave April the most trouble. So I'm going to help her walk through line choice a little bit and kind of help you guys understand what I look for when I'm looking at a turn. We're going to go over this a little bit more in the part two uh, cornering video, but just wanted to touch on it briefly here too. So when you're looking at a corner like this, the goal is to set up as wide as possible to give yourself the smoothest arc around the corner. And when you set up wide, break in a straight line. When you start leaning, let off the front brake, get in your good position and roll all the way through the corner. Okay. All right, so I'll do one for you really quick so you can see what I mean and then uh, we'll have you do the course. Okay, All see. right. So I'm braking, setting up, rolling. All right, so could you tell a difference there? Yeah. So even though I had slower entrance speed, my exit speed was much faster, and that's a little bit more how you wanna to try to corner. Anyone can go fast into a corner, 
good riders can go fast out of corners. So just think about that in your head. If you brake a little bit here, you'll carry more speed on the exit and it'll be better overall. All right, so uh, let's have you run through it. Hope I can get better. like that was better. Yeah, good job. Look around the corner. Look around the corner. Yeah. I think that was better too. That was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> that was a lot better. I know it's hard to remember everything that we learned today, especially for you guys wondering, we took like a little break cause it's so hot out. So we had to take a break and then come out here. So it's hard yeah. to remember everything. I definitely don't think I'm turning pro in a day. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for people that want to get better at cornering, what do you think helped the most? And what do you think that they should focus on? The biggest thing is dropping your outside foot uh -huh. and then positioning the bike away from your body, leaning it instead of your body. Yeah. And getting your elbow up and dropping that outside heel like, and looking ahead. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to remember. Like So many. I know. Like I said, we're going to do a part two. So if you have any questions, then throw them in at the bottom of this video in the comment section. And anything that we forgot to get to or glanced over, we will get to more in depth in part two. Um, but yeah, this one is kind of helping you guys with some drills you can practice, how to turn, get that bike body separation, and you'll be a million times better just in a day. But it, it takes a lot of practice. Yeah, it does. When I was trying to race pro, I would literally go out to the high school basketball court like three to four times a week and just do laps around the poles. And I mean, I have so many turns doing this, so it comes natural, but it's kind of weird the first few times. So just uh, be patient, keep trying hard, and you'll get it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you could click like and subscribe, that would help us a ton. And yeah, if you have any questions for the next video, then just throw them in the comments. We'll get to those as soon as we can. Yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> I think you uh, maybe messed that one up. <laughs> that wasn't good. <laughs> Try another one.